What's up, everyone? It's DB, and we're back in Bed Wars for some pro tips. It's been over, well over a year since my last pro tips video, and because it's been so long, I figured it is time to do a little bit of a refresher. Now, some of these tips may be exclusive to this um, current season seven. So, if later on I'm covering some stuff that's like related to items that are no longer in the game, you know why now. It's because it's part of this particular season with the Titan and such. We do have the new battle pass coming out pretty soon here, so we got like a little less than two weeks to go hype for season eight but before we jump into these tips be sure to hit that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel and let's get started with tip number uh one we'll just start there all right so with tip number one we're gonna be covering building techniques these are a couple of techniques that you can use to build faster a lot of people think i use an auto clicker to build in some cases you know if i'm demonstrating an auto clicker totally of course but like right here like this is an auto clicker that is an auto clicker this is not so you can right click on these real quick. So one thing I like to do whenever I'm building, a lot of people try to build in third person, which you can, you know, like if you're doing like this, you try to build. Um, third person building is, in my opinion, a lot harder than first person. So if you're doing first person, you can pretty much, um, you'll notice where my crosshair is. My crosshair is aimed up, so not directly down. Like I see a lot of players doing this like, that are new to the game. What you want to do is just kind of lift your crosshair up and start building. So you'll notice that black box, right? See how it's not leaving? You just need to get that attached first. So, you know, kind of keep the, your crosshair just a little bit up like that. As far as doing diagonal, so what I like to do is kind of like just get aimed up right here and then and just keep your cross here in the center and then sometimes you get these little like one-offs but just kind of keep trained diagonally and stick to it and for the most part you'll get mostly clean like results you're gonna still have a couple strays here and there which is fine it's not that big of a deal i see some people doing this by the way some people have like um a little too much ocd going on where they have to go and like go back and clean it up don't do that just leave the mess this this game's messy better words is messy okay now the other thing you could do is while you're falling you can catch yourself See how I can do that? And just make sure you're like kind of don't don't aim directly down. I mean, you can. You just trust it. You know, you can jump. If you're jumping while you build, you can, you know, pretty much do a little bit of this as well. Holding down space bar is going to pretty much keep you alive in these circumstances. You see, I'm just holding down space bar right now and I'm building and I'm just making sure I'm facing the wall at all times. If you face away, of course, I'm going to fall to the void if I do that. But you're pretty much safe down here. This is really, really easy to do. So catching yourself. So say you're like trying to make a jump and you're like, whoop, and you can just catch yourself like that. So same for over here. Now over here, it's a little trickier because you you know you kind of have this angle with the lip but you can still like kind of as you're falling just kind of run towards the base or the building structure and you should be fine you should be able to get out of that situation pretty good now as far as uh getting up to roofs so just make sure you know where the you know there's overhangs because if i did this i'm gonna get stuck up here and then i'm like great and i see people do this, this is like one of the most common things people do but all you gotta do is just do that and then build back up now the next thing i want to show you is something i kind of learned recently um i was just watching my friend weta if you haven't seen him definitely check him out but one thing i noticed he was doing that i thought was pretty interesting is he was basically aiming at the feet that i thought that was pretty interesting like if you just kind of put your mouse under your feet you can pretty much build wherever See, I saw him playing in third person and I saw where his mouse was. And if you keep your mouse like right under your feet, you could pretty much do that all day. And I think you could even do it like right here if you aim at like the waist. See how you can just do this? And it looks effortless, right? It looks effortless because it's just mouse placement. Also, if you're building up, just, you know, make sure you have your crosshair in the center or ideally like in a corner, like somewhere around here. Don't do this because you're going to start. Don't like have it like out like this because you're going to start doubling up sometimes. So just keep it like in the center. And then when you're jumping down, by the way, just make sure you build. So like uh, build around this. So like when you're jumping down, you can reduce a lot of fall damage doing this. And so just kind of circle around. And you could like avoid fall damage that way. So next up while we're here, we're going to show you the best bed defense that I like to use. So what you're going to do is you're going to first get uh, 40 iron. You're going to buy this stone. You're going to place the stone around. You just need to do it like this and then like that. And then you just kind of fill in the blanks. You're going to notice most people are going to defend the front, which is the right thing to do. Because typically speaking, when people are rushing your base, they're coming in this way. They're going to shoot a couple, you know, fireballs here, or they're going to try to like wall clutch. So you can like do the um, cliff break. I'm not going to show any of like the crazy bed breaking techniques today. Not in this video. I've already done those videos. Um, I might do another one in the future because it's been a while. Typically speaking, you're going to see most people will defend the front. And the nice thing about this is people don't really know where the bed is exactly. It could be back here. It could be right here. 
card. Could be that way, could be that way, right? Get some ceramic and you're gonna place ceramic around. If you don't have enough ceramic to fill, you know, cover the entire bed, I would recommend placing a couple, like just scatter it around because it really messes up the explosion. And I've seen a lot of competitive ranked players like do this, especially during my clan um, tournaments. And they basically scatter the ceramic. So when someone fireballs, it might hit this and it might only break one block. So it's still worth like scattering it because what you don't want to do is like do a perfect side, like ceramics here, but nothing in the back. You want to like evenly proportional, like kind of scatter it and diffuse it on your bed. Ideally though, you should just get enough to fill up the entire bed. It's cheap. Ceramic's really, really cheap now. And then uh, the next thing you're going to do is wool. This is not the perfect shape, by the way, but these are pretty much the layers you want to do no matter the shape. You know, you're going to put some stone down, you're going to put some blast proof ceramic down, and then you're going to put down wool. Those are pretty much the best uh, combinations because as long as they can't see that you have ceramic under this, they might assume that you just have wool under there. So they're probably going to be up here, right? As they usually are. Usually up here somewhere. They're gonna fireball and they're gonna be like, oh no. And by the time they finally realize you have ceramic, they may jump down, but they're gonna take some fall damage. See like that. And you can pretty much kill them. But then they're gonna be like, oh no. And they're gonna have to do this. And then they could get in but then they still have to break it unless they have a, an ax. And by the way, always, this is not really a pro tip. This should be just assumed for beginners. Always use an ax to break. If you're up here spending all that iron on fireballs and stuff, and then you come down here and you're still using a pickaxe, then things are wrong. Things are very broken. At least, at least bring a wooden one, man. At least bring a wooden one, but ideally just bring that, you know, at least a stone. Uh, stone's good, iron's better. Diamond overkill. Diamond's overkill, but it's one tap. It's one tap to break a bed. It's pretty nice. Now, what you're going to notice is a lot of like players defend mostly in the front because they keep getting attacked here, right? They keep getting fireballed, fireballed, fireballed. What happens? They come over here and they keep repairing this. And so the front gets thicker and thicker and more defended. Maybe they put some more bricks here. Maybe they put some blast proof ceramic, but guess what they're not doing? They're not putting it back here because it's crowding their area, right? Typically speaking, this is the most vulnerable part of any bed defense I I've seen in clan wars, in my tournaments, in um, ranked games, normal squads matches. Typically, this area is the least defended. Why? Because typically speaking, you can see the bed from here. So the right thing to do, if you're gonna break someone's bed like that, you just, you know, pro right here, couple fireballs, boom, boom break this and then if you have to break that again and then break the bed that's the way to do it because what's going to happen is you'll notice it's way thicker in the front right all those fells and you're tired of like coming in through here maybe you tried a couple of these like you know block clutch kind of moments where you try to cover yourself um and that's not working um, because you're getting tesla to death yeah just going from the other side the other thing i want to say is when you are using chess don't ever use public chess because this is not even though we call this you would call this a team chest is not it's just a public chest everyone has access to it so someone else over here pearls in comes in grabs all your stuff runs out pearls out that's kind of that's no bueno okay so that's no good so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna come over here you're gonna put your stuff inside this thing that way only and only when your team needs stuff then you place it inside the team chest don't just like keep storing stuff in the team chest like don't store your diamonds in there don't start you know store your emeralds in there even though you might be sharing stuff with your teammates only do that when they're picking up in real time. Don't do it while, you know, you're just kind of passively like letting them collect stuff over time. Make sure it's like they're ready to collect it. Now, when it comes to solos, what I'm going to say is always use early game advantage kits first. I mean, unless you're like really good at the game, then great. You don't even need a kit. You know, I don't even have to tell you that. There's lots of kits. I made a video specifically on like the best solos and doubles kits. Definitely check that out. Although it's missing some. I think, um, I don't think Lila is out yet. Some kits weren't out yet. Um, I would say like Hannah's a really good early game kit you know barbarian it can be it can be if you're really really good if you typically win your 1v1 kind of scenarios and you don't you're not worried about ping and stuff um barbarian's great um it could actually like backfire on you so be careful with that i want to say zephyr is a good one yuzi is a good one but any kits that have like early advantage cali is a good one any of them that have like early game advantage are worth it um sheila's really good i really like sheila because all i need is one kill all right let's talk about boeing and bed wars one thing you're gonna notice is you kind of can't aim directly directly at them. If you aim directly at players, obviously you're not going to hit them unless they're like standing still. Most of the time, they're not standing still, man. They're going to be like moving around and such. So what they're going to notice is I rarely aim towards them. I pretty much aim like a whole body ahead, but you don't really need to aim at the person or the object directly. So in this case, you're going to lead pretty far ahead of them. See like that? That guy right there, I, I led pretty much like three blocks ahead of him based on his speed. In the case of this drone over here, I'm trying to pace it. And we got it. Some of it's just like kind of instinctual. Like after you've like 
played enough. Oh, that guy just... Okay. Once you've played enough Bedwars for, you know, one, it does make a difference. And if you're trying to get better at bows in general, what I would highly recommend is just like focus on drones because drones are going to help you a ton with aim. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is fireballs. Um, a lot of people just end up using fireballs with like a fire enchant. You don't want to do that. It's all about static combo. Now they did nerf um, static and fire ticks, but it's just only slightly. It wasn't that, you know, big of a change, just slightly. Forest is a really good one as well. Um, I would say if you're going to go for it though, I would still highly recommend, let's get this real quick. I would still recommend static over forest unless you're really trying to gain that HP, which is really nice. All right, so we're going to get a bunch of these. All right, let's go take out this guy up here. Yeah, you're dead. You're dead. You can see the couple repeats there. They did reduce the ticks, I think, on fireballs. I think they were just too extreme. All right, here's another little technique. If you forgot about the bed breaking method, just fill it in. Pretty easy. And then just teleport home. Yeah, just kind of build over yourself, like dig a little hole, build over yourself, GG's. Now, next tip I'm gonna talk about is 30v30s. The best kit for 30v30s is always gonna be a scaling damaging kit. So that's gonna be, you know, I would say Barbarian, Aerie, but Aerie would be a really, really good one. Sheila's excellent. Um, Barbarian's good, that's excellent for 30v30s. I would say Zephyr's good. Caitlyn's really good over time. Elder Tree's okay, not as great, but okay. Hannah's pretty good for all around, like pretty much stays good the entire match. Yeah, you pretty much just want any like kits that are going to be continuing to scale up. So I know this one's pretty common sense, but join a clan. The reason why you want to join a clan is pretty simple. It has nothing to do with skills in the game, but two things are going to happen if you do. One is you're going to learn from other members, assuming you're not already a big sweat and you really want to learn the game. Definitely join a clan. They're going to teach you a lot. You're going to learn a lot. So just look for some friends that, you know, get along with. Maybe you have similar, you know, interests. You could join my clan, but it is pretty big and does take a little while to, you know, meet people, whereas a smaller clan is is sometimes easier to meet people. So UZ obviously is a super annoying kit, high mobility kit. So when you're trying to kill them, they don't die typically. They just keep like jumping around the map, right? So most pro players are going to keep a handful of gloops on them for that reason. So you can see he's bouncing around. So now he's slowed down and he can't get away. Now, Gorilla is fully capable of, like, retaliating. This is obviously just a demo. This is not a real match. So just to preface that, like, I'm not wrecking Gorilla because he's not skilled or anything. So you can see he's got a doubt. You can pretty much gloop up. He's useless now. He, look, he doesn't know what to do. He's so sad. So you can see this effect on him when he's glooped. And when you want to chase him down, just pop him one of those. And that's exactly what players are going to do. They're going to run straight into the gloop. <laughs> Die, die, die. So first up, let's talk about T1 strategy. You always have to ensure you at least have one person in charge of generator upgrades at a minimum and ensure you feed them diamonds to help them out. But typically speaking, if you're in a good squad, you're gonna utilize a set of strategies which you practice and rehearsed as a clan or squad. But when you're in a pickup group, of course, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to pull off because in that scenario, you're not familiar with each other's like play styles and such. So and some people are used to like bed break and some people are used to killing. There's different rules that people are used to having inside squads. If you're not familiar with everyone's like skills and style then you're just going to be all over the place so what i would recommend is always default to a tier one strategy if you're playing with others a tier one strategy basically means you have two going left two going right to the generators and collecting four diamonds to be able to get your t1 pretty much instantly so you're going to go out and the reason why you want to have two not just one on each side um, a lot of players just do one on each side but the reason why you want to have two going on each side is for backup a lot of you know a lot of times they get ganked by a player and so it's just a little bit better if you have two going with each other it's just a safe call. You don't have to. So if you're fully capable of taking on two players, maybe you have a really good kit. Maybe you don't have to do this, but it's just a general. This is like the most beginner safe strategy for diamond gathering and upgrades. Now, one of the things I would recommend if you're not very good at bed breaking is just to focus on bed breaking. Don't worry about like getting good at kills. If you keep getting killed, don't worry about that. Just get really good at avoidance and bed breaking. During the early comp days of Bed Wars, a new clan called G Dogs would often target us in matches because they were a skilled clan. They knew we were competitive. So they would pretty much focus us the entire match and their method was simple in its persistence it wasn't about like you know resource gathering a ton it wasn't it was just brute force they would just keep hitting us over and over and over making it so we can really breathe um if we let off our guard for one second they took our bed i just remember them constantly dropping tnt on me because i was typically defending the base uh, making sure you know no one got our bed so i would have to defend this bed constantly from their attacks and that's how they got really good in my
my opinion. We saw this in Clan Wars. They would always go for bed breaks first. They wouldn't really, you know, try to out like power players. They would just hit the beds constantly. Strategies have evolved over time. So competitive play is very different now. I'm just saying, if you feel like you're mediocre and really want to get better, really focus on your bed breaking skills because if you could break the enemy's bed, you're, they're going to dwindle. You have the upper hand. They're going to start changing their play style. You know, players play very different when they know their bed is broken. Generally speaking, they will play a little bit more conservative. They won't be so aggressive on you. And if you can bed break, you're going to win a lot more matches. Um, now, assuming you got the bed broken, the next thing you want to do is focus on one player at a time. This is how we play. This is how comp clans and the clan wars used to do it. And they still do. And that's focus on the weakest player as a group. Not just like one off. Like you don't split off and just pick whoever's closest to you. You go after the weakest player. You'll bypass even the strongest players just to kill that weakest player. The top clans use this technique and they have for a long time. Get the weakest out first and then you go after the strongest and group up on them. Another tip I would say is anytime you're playing in a squad, try to get in a VC chat with that group. So if you're a clan, if you're a group of friends, try to get into voice chat. If you're too young to be able to get voice chat on Discord, maybe you can't join Discord because you're too young to, then don't worry about that so much. Just do it through um, pings. Just use the ping a lot. So ping for bed breaks, ping when you need help and ping for um, when your bed is getting rushed. Or if you're just dropping iron and such, or you're trying to get like, you know, splits and such, use the pings for that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If these tips were helpful for you, please do me a solid. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next vid. Peace.